Hello, my name is Amber and I'm a senior at Marion. The first time I slept in a car, I must have been six or seven. I was excited to spend the weekend at my dad's house, but when the car stopped, we were at Benson Park, and when I realized we would be sleeping there, I didn't ask questions. I was just excited to spend time with my dad. And I remember being mad at him for not letting me swim in the pond. I remember specifically what I wore that day, a pink rhinestone tank top, and a bubblegum pink skirt with palm trees and the word Hawaii in blue cursive letters. It was my favorite skirt. I remember specifically what I wore that day because that night I wet the bed. Can I say that if I didn't sleep in a bed? I wet the passenger seat and I cried because I felt guilty and because I had to be a little uncomfortable for the rest of the morning in my warm, damp skirt. <laughs> Looking back, I feel bad for my dad, who had to be a little uncomfortable in his smelly, makeshift house for the rest of the week. I recall that story as a girl at school's words echo in my head. She yells, unless someone is old or disabled, they are homeless by their own accord. I wonder if she would say that in front of the girl sitting in the snow in the parking lot outside. Why is she there? Why isn't she waiting inside the school? I asked, are you okay? Do you need anything? I think that anyone who says they're fine is lying. She says, you wouldn't want to mess with a homeless person anyway. I say, okay, but do you need some gloves? You look cold. I know that anyone who says they're fine is lying. She tells me she has no place to go. I feel helpless, but not in the sense that I cannot be helped. I feel like there's nothing I can do to be helpful. I am helpfulless, and it is a truly awful feeling. I am helpfulless, and this girl might be hopeless. Not in the sense that no one has hope in her, but that she has no hope in herself. There is nothing I can do to take care of this hopeless girl. I say, it's cold, and it might not get any warmer. Just stay safe, okay? Walking to my car, the cold air stings my hands, and the defeat on that girl's face stings my heart. I wonder about her circumstances, if she has a dad and a car and a skort, how long she's been out on her own, but I know there's nothing I can do to make anything okay. At home, I lay in bed with this heavy feeling that I need to throw away everything I own and make all new friends and hug my parents more often. So I call my dad and ask him to go to Benson Park. That pond brings back so many memories. So he tells me stories about his childhood. He lived in North O, South O, Bennington, but he never tells me stories about living in his car. I guess that's one memory of home he wants to forget. 